Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Monkey Wrench. I'm Kelly, the monkey with the wrench. Today is another solar powered video. So thanks for coming by. Please subscribe. Now today's video is gonna be on this greener power, 100 amp hour, 12.8 volt LifePo battery. We're going to put this thing through its test. You've seen plenty of unboxing videos on it, so I'm gonna show you what this thing is really capable of how long a refrigerator will run, which is behind me at the moment, and uh, let's see if this thing has the capacity that it's rated for. It is fully charged, I'll show you that in just a second. I'm not gonna hook it up to external solar power or anything like that, I just wanna let you know what one battery can do with one refrigerator, and honestly, I don't know, because when the compressor is turned on, on the refrigerator, while it's actually cooling, that takes a certain amount of wattage, and then when it's off and it's cool inside and keeping its temperature, it doesn't take any power except for the inverter. So I'm really curious to find out the end result of this test. So let's get to it. This is the refrigerator that I'm using. Let me stand up next to it. So you can see just how large this thing is. It has a refrigerator, which I have junk in at the moment. And it has a freezer that makes ice. Got plenty of room up there. This is what they consider a mini fridge and it's perfect for power outages. So what we're working with here is very simple. Just the battery, there's nothing attached to it except for my inverter. That's it, that's the whole system. Now let me show you real quick. So we have 13.53, 13.54 volts. Now all I'm going to do is use a normal watt meter it's gonna have to sit upside down there we go it's all zeros across the board now I'm gonna go ahead and plug the refrigerator in keeping the same settings as always I heard the inverter kick on Right now it's using 313-ish watts. That's gonna go down. It always starts high and goes way down. I wanna say it's gonna go down somewhere around 50 watts after it gets all caught up. But you can see the timer running at the top. I'll check in on this every once in a while and we'll see, we're gonna let it run until it shuts off, until the battery is completely dead. And then we'll be able to look at the history and find out how much we used. Right now it's tooth hurdy p.m. We'll check back every hour and, and we'll see how long it, it goes before this thing completely dies. So this is important. This watt meter, th we're at 33 seconds so far because that's all it's run. It was already cold in there. The compressor kicked on at 2.30 and it ran for 33 seconds and then shut off. And right now we're not using any wattage. Now you might ask yourself, well how do we know when the battery is dead? Well that's real simple. All I have to do is open the fridge and see if the light's still on. So as I monitor this every half an hour, if it's showing me that I'm not using anything and you see that it's using 10.4 watts and counting the seconds because I have the light on in the fridge, I'll be able to show you what time of day it is, whether it's 10 hours or 12 hours or whatever. I'll check this thing every half hour and I'll give you guys like three hour updates. My watch does not show the date so I figured I'd show you date and time here. It's 2.46 p.m. on 10.22 and it has been running for 13 minutes and 45 seconds and we've gotten down to 50 watts. This thing really is an energy saver. Before we go any further I'd like to thank Greener Power for sending me this battery. This is not a sponsored video. So these are my true thoughts on this battery. This is a 100 amp hour battery with a 100 amp BMS installed. It weighs roughly 22 pounds. It is waterproof. It's great for setups on your boat, for marine applications, in your RV, in your tiny home, in your office, those types of things. This is gonna be set up on a permanent solar system and I've been using this battery now for about two weeks and I love it. According to the manufacturer, you can get up to 4,000 cycles or 4,000 full uses. 
if you discharge from 100% to 0%, if you only discharge from 100% to 40% or use 60% of this battery, it's rated for up to 15,000 charges. And if you think about it, 4,000 cycles, or if you use this thing and you recharge it every single day, like your cell phone, 365 days in a year, so 3,650 days is 10 years. This thing is gonna get you a minimum of 10 years, even if you use it from 100% to 0%. I try to keep my battery usage at about 80%, so that I, ex I can extend that lifespan up to about 20 years and I'm already 50 so by the time I'm 70 I'm not going to be jumping around trying to set up these things for you guys or fix machines so I just wanted to let you know that I have been using this battery I didn't just receive it 20 minutes ago and I'm trying to do a first impressions video on it it's not like that I don't do those kinds of things on my videos if you're interested in this battery and I highly recommend this battery for its price point it's a good basic battery. I'm in a warm climate, so I don't have to worry about cold weather shutoffs, and and I don't leave them in the sun, so I don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. But for a good basic lithium iron phosphate battery, this thing does the trick. But today we're gonna be hooking it up, and I'm gonna show you if this thing really does have its capacity. So thanks again to Greener Power for sending me this battery. If you guys are interested, there's a link in the description. Let's get back to it. Magic and technology. This battery is not getting hot in any way. I don't even have the terminals more than hand tight. Everything on this thing is great. I have been using this battery here in my office for the past couple of weeks. It's lightweight. It's easy to use. It's easy to recharge with my plug-in power charger as well as my solar panels. Everything's just plug and play. So I can't say thank you enough to the Greener Power Company for sending me this battery. I'm 100% happy with it. Okay, here's the one hour update. And according to the timer at the top, this thing has run for 32 minutes and 25 seconds during the first hour. It is now 3.30 on the same day. So in one hour, this thing is only run for 32 minutes. Well, the time is 5.30, so it's been just over three hours, and it's run for one hour and 41 minutes. All so right, just the things I do for you people. What do you mean, you people? What do you mean, you people? Huh? I it's 2.24 in the morning, 2.30 in the morning. I started this at 2.30 p.m. 12 hours ago, and I'm still up filming for you guys to get this video correct according to this the refrigerator has run four and a half hours in the last 12 hours which means roughly it comes on 20 minutes every hour i just want you to know the power is still rocking of course and we still have frozen ice up here this thing is holding its temperature perfectly it's 10.30 p.m. That's 32 hours into this test. And the reason that's important is because we're at 641 watt hours out of 1,280. That's exactly half. We're halfway through at 32 hours. Okay, everybody. It is 7.30 p.m., give or take. And the test started 53 hours ago. That's five, three hours. And it is now done. We used a total of 289 watts. A 100 amp hour battery, 100 times 12.8, which is the voltage, comes out to 1280 watts. So you should be able to use 1280 watts. Well, that's one of the things that the other channel's tests do not show. They do a 12 volt test pulling what they want out of it to show you that the battery is capable of 1280 watts, plus a little more usually. And what they don't explain to you is that you have power loss due to the inverter. This is a real world test. If your power goes out and you need to use an inverter to plug in your CPAP machine or your refrigerator or anything else that your family must use, you have to use an inverter. And with an inverter, you can lose anywhere from 5 to 20% of your power. So 990 watts out of 1290 watts that's roughly 20 percent 
So in my case, because the test went on for two plus days, when the inverter, when the refrigerator was not running, when the compressor was off, the inverter was still drawing power. So I lost about 20% of my battery's capacity from the inverter just sitting with the little light on doing its thing. It's always drawing power. So in a real world situation, when you need to plug in lights, when you need to plug in anything, stereo, TV, fish tanks, refrigerators, it doesn't matter, and you must use an inverter, inverter, remember, turn off your inverter when you're not using it. People make that mistake, they'll plug their inverter into their battery, and they'll leave it whether they're using it or not, just thinking, hey, I'll just come plug it in when I need. They didn't take any power because I didn't use lights all night. And then they go to turn on the lights, and the inverter's been on the whole time. So remember, you must turn off your inverter when you are not using it. Now, I couldn't do that because I had to allow this thing to stay automatic and have the compressor kick on whenever the temperature dropped. So remember, if you make ice in the first few hours and you keep ice in the freezer the whole time, the power outage is going on, and then you bring it back and forth to the refrigerator, maybe move one frozen gallon jug down to the fridge every eight or ten hours it'll slowly start to melt inside the fridge but it'll keep the temperature of the fridge lower and then you only have to plug in the fridge three or four times in a 24 hour period for maybe an hour you can conserve battery power you can keep your medication cold in my case it would be insulin so you could do these things and extend the life of your battery I wanted to show you in the real world application how long you could just plug in a refrigerator and leave it go in a power outage without having to recharge the battery. So this battery is fully capable of 1280 watts. We got about a thousand watts usage out of it. The inverter didn't count. That's what you have to understand. On the watt meter, you have the battery, the inverter, then the watt meter, then the refrigerator. The watt meter was after the inverter. So it was only showing what the refrigerator used. It wasn't showing what the inverter used. That's why there's a, a difference of about 300 watts there, 9 to 12, yeah, about 300 watts. Because it wasn't taking into consideration what was happening behind it, only what was happening in front of it. So if I were to do a load test on this and show you, it wouldn't come out to be anything different. You just understand that the the inverter used about 300 watts and that's why it didn't show up on the watt meter so anyway i hope this video helped hit the like button hit the subscribe button it's somewhere between my chin and my balls and if you're interested in what it takes to put solar panels on top of your van or in my case the office with no special tools check out this video right here and i'll see you soon